During this demo, we have now looked into the main allocation graphs and the call graph view. And we're now going to look at the fragmentation, the memory layout view. This is a very challenging view to create because we want to have an overview of all of the memory available. And in the past, this was perhaps 32 two megabytes like on the PlayStation 2. And it was quite easy to view all of that memory in a single window. But now that we have 256, 512 or 2, two gigabytes of memory, or perhaps even more in the future, it is quite challenging to be able to visualize that in a single window. So it needs to be scalable. And at the same time, we want to zoom in on specific blocks and inspect those. If you think about fragmentation for a while, then arguably the most important information is whether uh, a block has been allocated in certain, on a certain position in the memory space or not. For instance, if you consider the entire memory space and a single byte has been allocated right in the middle of the memory space, then the largest block can, that can be allocated is only half of the memory space. So a clear distinction between a block that is allocated or not allocated is very important in visualization. Other techniques to visualize fragmentation exist and they generally take time into consideration as well. Uh, but I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. And the final challenge was to keep the insertion into the data structure of all the blocks and the painting of all the blocks in real time. Although I must admit that it is currently slowing down the server side a little bit and I will try to optimize it in the future. So this is how the fragmentation view works. Each square of four by four pixels represents a memory range and there can be multiple blocks allocated in that range. And if only a fraction of that block is allocated, it is displayed in cyan. And when the entire range has been fully allocated, it is displayed in blue and the colors are in interpolated in between. But if it's not allocated at all, it is displayed in white. Let's see how that works in practice. The memory layout view is located in the top right. Let's open up a session that we've recorded earlier. Let's select five minutes on the horizontal axis so that we have a good overview of all of the allocations. And now let's put the cursor on this position exactly where the game was ended before going to the menu. You can see the memory usage going down. We can use the play button in the toolbar to replay the recording. Pay close attention to what happens in the memory layout view. I'm going to stop it right here before we go into the menu. The number one cause for fragmentation is isolated deaths. And there seem to be quite a few of them here. Although our engine has very explicit lifetimes. If we move over a block, we can see the block, the range, and we can double click to inspect those blocks. Let's click one of those blocks and open up the block inspect form. Because a single block in the memory layout view can contain multiple blocks, this view contains a list of all the blocks. And if you click on the block, you can see the entire call stack of the block. And also the size that was requested and the size that was actually received along with the time that the block was allocated is displayed in this list. If we click on the function, we can get the source code, just like with the call graph view. And finally, we can zoom in on the graph and you can see that some of the blocks were split up and changed color. 
and we can inspect the blocks on a much more detailed level now. The last view that I would like to demonstrate is the bucket graph view. The bucket graph view shows the distribution of all of the allocated blocks. The horizontal axis shows the buckets, 0 to 7 bytes, 8 to 15 bytes, 16 to 31 bytes and so on. And the vertical axis can show various allocation properties. For instance it is now currently set to the block count, but it can also be set to the size. If we hover over a bar it will be highlighted and if we will double click it, it will open up the call graph and only the allocation within this bucket range will be displayed in the call graph view. For almost any memory manager there is a difference between the size that was requested by the client and the size that was received. We can see this distinction in this graph. The green part shows the number of bytes that have been requested and the red part shows the waste. And this is probably due to alignment. We can also view the waste independently and in our case we can see that there are actually several megabytes wasted purely due to alignment overhead. Very interesting. It is very well possible that the distribution, the default distribution on this horizontal axis will not suffice, so we have several presets and you can create your own preset as well. Let's create a custom preset by clicking the graph icon on the right side of the presets. All we need to do now is select the new preset from the drop down list and the new distribution will be shown in the graph. To wrap up I would like to show you some of the IDs I have. Um, I would certainly like to visualize the sections in the application better by sending over markers and I would f visualize those in the main allocation graphs. Also it would be very convenient to perform comparisons between sessions. All of the addresses have been changed so that's not that easy. I think I would have to do it by using a string lookup uh, of the functions and that way you could easily check how many geometry, how many textures or any other resources have been allocated from week to week. Some other tools are already quite good at finding memory errors. I could probably do that as well and I I'm quite intrigued by the idea of visualizing locality of reference, if that is at all possible. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in some of the more technical details, I wrote several articles about this subject for Gamer Sutra, so you might want to check those out. And finally I would like to thank the Blue Engine team and everyone else at Vanguard Games.